So we're back for part, section two of unit four, right? So like I said, this one gets pretty, um, it's very lengthy. Like there's a lot of steps here. There's like 10 different steps. I could have probably made it less. There's 12 steps, I think, and I could have made it less, but I left out. I didn't leave out any details. So um, we're going to take a look at this. And this is the ANOVA. We refer to it as the ANOVA, the F test, uh, the analysis of variance, right? So the T test works when there's two groups, right? But often we have more than two groups. And so we need something that's going to work for more than two groups, and that's the ANOVA, right? And so uh, we had same routine with the null hypothesis. I'm not going to go all through that again, right? That stays the same no matter what for the rest of your life. That'll be the same. Nothing's going to change. Um, so, but what we need to do is, like I said, there's three groups here, A, B, and C. Uh, and this could be for more groups, it doesn't matter, you know, but I'm trying to keep it simple. So we just kept it down to the minimum of three. You can actually do this for two groups too, but it's a lot of work to do, much more than the T-test. So you wouldn't do it for just bother to do it for just two groups either, but it does work the same, okay? So uh, this table is complete, right? And basically when you get your worksheet and your, and your exam, uh, I'm going to give you just the scores and you're going to have to fill out all the rest of this stuff. But for the, for my notes, I filled it out for you, right? And we're going to keep bouncing back and forth a little bit. Okay. But typically, you know, your examples, your questions, your things you're going to get, you're only going to get those scores. Okay. But this is what the table needs to look like in the end. Uh, right. So here we just have the sum of group A, the sum of group B, the sum of group C squares which you've done before right and so these are the sums of the squares for each group then we have the mean for each group and then this is the total sum of the scores which is 31 plus 29 plus 12 right over here and then i have the total for the sum of the squares right the 207 plus the 195 plus 40. okay so this is my table. I created my table and I got all this put together because I'm going to use most of this, if not all of it, during this process of the ANOVA analysis. So that's step one, putting your table together. Step two is to compute the total sum of the squares, SST. And SST is equal to the sum of X squared minus the sum of xt squared over n, which in our case is equal to, so the sum of x squared is two, right? The 207 plus the 195, 179, that's not right. Oh, something, hold on. Uh -oh. Hold on. All right. Well, we're going to skip this example. Sorry. I'm going to move to a different example. Uh, oh, I see. Hold on. All right. Sorry. I will fix that in the notes. But for now, at least this is why you always have a backup plan B, right? Because this is my other, this is the same formula, the same process, but with different numbers. Uh, I did, that was one of those things I said, I, I came out with a, a, an answer that was not what I wanted. I had to change all the, the scores to come up with an answer I wanted. And obviously I missed that part in the equation, so I don't want to make it worse. So here we are with the ANOVA and we're going to go right here, right? And so here we did, here's your table. Like I said, you would get it, right? But here's all the other things that you need to complete. Mm -hmm. So you would do that, and here it is completed. And I finished that, right? And now I'm going to go to, like I said, SST, the sum of, total sum of the squares, which is this, right? So here we got it. And here's this 
if you go back to the table, obviously, right? Here's my numbers, 232, 192, right? So you'll have to trust me that I did it right. I checked it twice for this, so hopefully I did do it right. Anyway, right? So here's the total sum of x squared, which is right here, 232, right? Right. 40, all right, times the sum of xt, right, the total of all the scores, 83 over n, large n, which is the total number of subjects, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six people in each group, and we have three groups. So the total number of subjects is 18. Right, and then we just did the math. I added this up to 463, then I did this division, it's 382.72, right? 382.72, do the subtraction, and it's 80.28. And we're going to save this number in a different table, which is coming up in the process, okay? So don't worry, we're just going to save this data for now. And we're going to move on to step three, which is the it between groups sum of the squares <laughs> okay and the S, S, ssb the between groups sum of the squares right so the sum of x squared uh, the sum of x squared over n which in the small n is the number of people in each group so in our case this is six right minus the sum of xt squared over the large n, which is the total number of subjects, right? And there's all of that is here to remind you, okay? So, the sum of x squared over n is actually broken down to this. So I have each individual group score, right? So if you go back and look at the table, right? Here's the totals for x. And that's what I have here. Right, and so it's the 36 squared over six, the 33 squared over six, the 14 squared over six, right? So this is A, group A, group B, and group C. And that's how I'm getting this sum right here, is by doing them individually and adding them up, right? So that's where the work is. Minus the sum of xt squared over n, which is, we're gonna, I keep jumping back to the table, right? The sum of xt, the sum right here, 36 plus 33 plus 14. So that's where I'm getting all the numbers. I'm just plugging numbers from the table into the formulas repeatedly, right? So I did these computations and this is 216. 0, 1 point, 181.5 and 32.667 minus 83 squared divided by 6, which turns out to be 383.722, right? And then when I do that final uh, subtraction, I get 47.445. Point four four five. So SSB, the sum of the squares between groups is 47.445. And we just put that aside for now and we're going to add that into a new table as we go on. Okay? So, and here we are at the new table. So, uh, this is where we build our ANOVA table, right? And this is it. Complete and build the ANOVA table. According with, or, and in this table right here, I put this too, for this is the sum of the squares within groups, right? So we have what's in, happening inside each group, plus we have in what's, hap we, what's happening between each groups, and then we have a total of all the groups combined. So that's why SSB, SSW, SST. And the SSW, the sum of the squares within groups, is simply the S set. Total sum of the squares minus the between group sum of the squares. So in our case, that is the 80.278 minus the 47.445. Okay? And then 
here's our new ANOVA table, and this is it. So we have this, I gotta move that. I think I can at the moment. Anyway, so we have the source of the variance, right? Between groups, within groups, and the total, like I said. Then we have what we're gonna figure out in a minute is our degrees of freedom. And we already figured out our sum of the squares, right? And then later, we, and then we're going to get down and do the mean squares, right? Until we get to F, right? Because this is the F test, the ANOVA test. So this is our new table. And now we plugged in that first set of data that we got. So now we are going to figure out the degrees of freedom, okay? So again, we have a between groups degree of freedom, a within groups degree of freedom, and a total degree of freedom, right? Just like every, just like the sum of the squares, we have a different one for each category. So DFB is actually equal to n, the small n minus one, and this is the number of groups minus one. So here's the definition, right? We're move, changing it, right? Here we have, so that's for the between group, right? DFB is N minus one, three minus one is two. We do the next step, which is to compute the DF, the degree of freedom for the totals, which in our case is N capital N, which is the total number of subjects, right? For subjects minus one, and in our case, that's 18 minus one, which is 17. Then we want to compute the degrees of freedom within groups, DFW, and which is simply like with the sum of the squares, it's the degree of freedom total minus the degrees of freedom between each group. So in our case, that's 17 minus two is 15. So then what do we do, right? So the thing to do is help keep track. We go back and we plug this into our table, okay? We keep updating our table as we go along. Here we go. And this is, now we're getting down to the, we're coming. I know we're like two thirds of the way through. We're getting there, okay? This is it. So the mean squares, right? And to do this, it really, this is maybe the easiest part. So what we're gonna do is we divide the sum of the squares by its associated D degree of freedom, right? So the mean square between groups, MSB, is the sum of the squares for the between groups divided by the degree of freedom for the between groups, right? Which in our case was the 47.445 divided by two which is equal to 23.723. And I wanna explain this now, like up and now I've been talking to you about um, always conclude two decimal points. Well, one of the rules of thumb is to do that, we work in at least three decimal points until we get to the end. And then we don't, we round that final, do that final rounding off when we get, when we're presenting our answer to the two decimal points. But we work with more than two decimal points as we're moving along. And obviously in your calculator, you're working with six or eight decimal points, whatever it works out to be. And um, you're not gonna round off until then. But I want you to know when we work with paper and pencil, we work with at least three, right? And so a lot of this stuff I do with paper and pencil. <laughs> Uh, rather than my uh, calculator. So, but I want you to understand, you work with at least one more decimal point than you're gonna present with to make your answer. And you do that rounding at the last thing. So that's why I got the three decimal points here. I just wanted to explain that while we're going along. Then same thing, compute the groups with the mean, the, the mean square of within groups, right? So MSW, is equal to the mean of the, the sum of the squares from W over the divided by the degree of freedom for W. In this case, it's this right here. And if you go and look at our table, you will see that that works. All right? So, here. Okay. 
So now what do we do? We go back and we plug those figures into here, into the table right here, right? Now, we're getting down to the easy part. So I said this was long. I said this was complicated, right? And I want you to know that, um, you know, it is, but what did I do here? Oh. Um, so here we have all of our data, right? And now all we needed, well, I put it in here already, but what we didn't have previously was F, right? And so here's the big number, F. Which is the mean of the square between groups divided by the mean square within groups. We don't do a total one for this, right? And so here it is, we plugged in the numbers and now we have a value of F, right? And I didn't put it in here, but I, I'm hoping you realize this is what, what we're going to call, right? The observed value. This is our observed value because what are we going to do now, right? We're going to go to a table and we're going to match our critical value and our observed value. So this is our uh, the value we calculated from our data and that's our observed value. So our observed value is 10.837. So the only thing left right here in the table is probability. And is P going to be greater than or less than 0.05 at 0.05 level? Okay. So obviously, what do we need to do? We need to go to the F table. Now, this one's a little bit different, right? Because I am going to look at my degrees of freedom and I'm going to have to go back and for my own benefit and see what that says. So I have to... Oh, and I did something. Uh, I... All right, sorry. I um, I might, I'll try to change this table or I'll add a, a different table to the modules. Um, at any rate, see it's a, the denominator degree of freedom and the numerator degree of freedom. Well, I'm guessing you can't figure out what that is and I don't blame you. But what I wanted to do, so the denominator is actually the within groups degree of freedom, right? So in our case, that was 15. And I know you can't see my table side by side, I'm pointing to something over here that you can't see. Anyway, so the denominator is the within groups degree of freedom and the numerator is the between groups degree of freedom, right? So within, within and I will post the table in the modules that uh, I will add that in there, okay? Sorry about that. At any rate, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with our within group degree of freedom is 15 and oh, let me see some. She told me I could write on this. It's true, isn't it? Oh, wait, wait. Yes. All right. So I think I can actually show you, right? So I'm going to. Yeah, no, I don't want that. This. All right. So I'm going to go down here, right? This is the within groups. And I'm going to try to make a W here. <laughs> and I'm going to go right down here to 15, right? Here we are. And then what I said was our... Um, what is our other one? Two, right? Got to go back to my PowerPoint and look. And our other degree of freedom was two. So, um, sorry, I'm fumbling around here. So then I'm going to go over here to the two, right? And I'm going to load down to the 15. And here we are, right? And so I have 3.682. This is my critical value, right? Obviously, when you go back, and I'm going to get out of here. And, if I can go back to my PowerPoint. Let me see, how do I do this? I'm gonna go back here, right? So we got this of 10. So obviously our observed value is greater than our 
a period value and right so here we go the last step right to make the decision to reject or not reject the null hypothesis i went through all of that i got all of that stuff and here's what it basically comes down to right our um, what happened to my pointer it's like disappeared anyway our observed value is obviously greater than our critical value at the 0.05 level. And so we have statistical significance at the 0.05 level. P is less than 0.05. And so we reject the null hypothesis in this case. Even though you have no idea what we studied, we didn't, I didn't lay out like what the groups we did or anything, right? But we're, um, Basically, I wanted you to walk through the process and map. I know it's long, it's a lot, but it's still just like take it a bite at a time. It's just simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, right? I keep saying nobody's asking you to find anything uh, challenging, right? There's none of that. This train's going 60 miles an hour. This train's going 30 miles an hour. It's just plug in the numbers. You make the table, you plug in the numbers, you do the simple math. All right. uh, and that is our big topic for today, the ANOVA. And um, there is one more smaller section left for this. But uh, like I said, take your time with this, digest it, really make sure you get this before you move on to the next section three of this unit, right? So we got one more thing to go over in this unit and then we will be done. All right, so as always, reach out to me if you got questions. There is my cursor. Hold on.